The battle intensifies as Don Bosco faces his toughest challenge yet. With his school under scrutiny and his teacher's qualifications questioned, he must navigate a labyrinth of legal and bureaucratic obstacles. But Don Bosco is no ordinary priest. He's a master strategist with unwavering faith. Watch as he turns the tables on his opponents, using their own rules against them. In the second installment of our three-part episode, we'll witness Don Bosco's brilliant maneuvers and the unexpected allies he finds along the way. Get ready for a masterclass in perseverance and faith in action. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Adrian Fonseca. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Howdy! Welcome back to the Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco. I'm Adrian Fonseca, and in our last episode, we saw how Don Bosco's school came under a threat from government officials. Today, we'll see how he fights back, using his wit and wisdom to outmaneuver his opponents. And as we continue this thrilling story, ask yourself, how can fate and intellect work together in the face of adversity? If you're inspired by Don Bosco's unwavering commitment, consider becoming a monthly promoter of St. John Bosco. We give amazing gifts to our donors, and the details are all in the description box down below. So, let's continue to our story. Don Bosco was determined to keep his resident secondary school open at any cost. God, he felt, was on his side. In fact, at the height of this controversy with the Department of Education, he undauntedly set about erecting a three-story addition to the oratory, some 45 feet high, 120 feet long, and 32 feet wide. Half the entire length of the main floor was portioned into rooms and the other half into porticios. During recreation, the boys eagerly lugged bricks and tiles up the scaffolding. Work continued throughout the year and then was completed at the beginning of 1864. Don Bosco had these four inscriptions painted on the Porticio's walls. 1. Netrares bistis animas confetientis tebi et animas popero, torum ne obliviscaris in finem. Deliver not up to beasts the souls that confess to you. Be not forever unmindful the lives of your afflicted ones. Psalm 73, 19. The second one was inscripted, Pre occupemus fascia meus, in confession et in salmis jubilemus sei. Let us greet him with thanksgiving and joyfully sing psalms to him. Psalm 94, 2. And thirdly, there was inscripted, Quia abscondit, scalara sua non deregetur, qui autem confessus, fuerit et reliquerit ea, misericordiam consequetur. He who conceals his sins shall not prosper, but who confesses and forsakes them obtains mercy. Proverbs 28.13 And fourthly, Non confundaris confiteri peccata tua et ne subicias, tu omni omni pro peccato. Be not ashamed to confess your sins, but submit not yourself to every man for sin. As construction went briskly forward, Don Bosco having only the March 23rd communication of the Minister of the Interior to go by, realized that he could only keep a secondary school open at the hostile time by meeting the state requirements. When he tried to register the clerics of the University of Turin, he was told that they would first have to take the comprehensive college examinations. Difficulties cropped up one after another, all calculated to aggravate Don Bosco and force him to desist. This time, though, he found another and illegal way out. The oratory secondary school teachers had completed their philosophy courses in a seminary under instructors certified by the University of Turin. According to the old school legislation, or at least its time-honored interpretation, a seminary philosophy examination was presumed equivalent to a comprehensive college examination. Several priests had been admitted to the university on the strength of this interpretation. Hoping thus to shorten as much as legally possible his cleric's attendance at the university, Don Bosco had his young teachers petition the university rector to give them the benefit of the provisions of this legislation. To their petition, 
he added a statement to the effect that these young men were contributing their services gratis on behalf of indignant students. The request was rejected. Hercules Ricotti, rector of the University of Turin and professor of modern history and art criticism, was one of those Don Bosco called on. A historian warmly favored by liberals and the author of A History of Europe and one of Italy, had read Don Bosco's Storia, Thalia for junior high schools, but had attributed its golden, simple style and presentation that had been highly praised by Tomasio to the meager talent and scantly education. His misconception was a result of this anti-clerical bias. Furthermore, he took personal offense at certain critical remarks allegedly made by Don Bosco about his own writings. Don Bosco had often called on him at the university and his home, uh, but always in vain. At this juncture, he made one last attempt and called on Ricotti at the university. As usual, he was expecting to be told that the rector was busy and could not receive him. However, the unexpected happened. Ricotti chanced to walk out of his office in search of a clerk. Quickly, Don Bosco stood in the front of the door. Ricotti was soon back. He knew Don Bosco, for he had spoken with him several times in the past, but now he pretended not to recognize him. May I have a word with you? Don Bosco asked. Who are you? I am Don Bosco. Yes, Don Bosco, the priest who spoke so unflattering of me and discredited my work, The History of Europe. You are quite mistaken, sir. I have never discredited your work. Indeed you have. You even claim that my history is full of lies. Let's be frank and lay our cards on the table. Admit your statement. He ushered Don Bosco into his office and bade him sit down. Then moving his chair close to him, he said, Isn't it true that you freely disparage my works? I assure you, Don Bosco replied, I have never said or written a word against it. Well, let me rephrase my question. Do you approve or disapprove of my history of Europe. I cannot approve it. Well, that's all I wanted to know. And will you tell me why? Because you openly fly into the face of truth. I'll come straight to specifics. You claim that Leo X fraudulently succeeded in becoming Pope, that he was a hypocrite in an ivy, and still was called the Great by his courtiers and that his century is named after him, despite no merit of his own. Well, have you read Voight? He is a Protestant, yet he states that Leo X greatly honored his pontificate with many splendid and noteworthy achievements, and that he was more deserving of his age than anyone else. So it was only fair and logical to be named after him. Voight exalts and praises him admirably. Now, Professor, Who am I to side with you, a Catholic who strongly discredits such a famous pope, or some other historian who, having all the reasons possible to discredit him, praises and exalts him to the skies? Ricotti was quite at a loss for a reply. He tried to justify his position, but finally had to admit that Don Bosco was right. He then highly praised Don Bosco's Storia de Italia claiming it could never be adequately appreciated. Busy as you are, he asked, how could you conceive such a difficult work and so admirably bring it to completion? Don Bosco had not called on Ricotti to hear flattering praises, which he sensed were insincere, so he lost no time in shifting the conversation to the topics that he had most at heart. The threats to shut down his secondary school the refusal to let his teachers take certification examinations, and his need of qualified instructors. Ricotti listened quite sympathetically and promised support, stating that Don Bosco's providential work for homeless boys deserved his favor. Don Bosco hoped to gain Ricotti's backing, but it was slow in coming because the latter did not consider the seminary's philosophy examination equivalent to a college comprehensive exam, and he would not allow abridged courses. But just as every obstacle seemed insurmountable, Bartholomew Prieri, Dean of the Philosophy and Literature Faculty and Professor of Greek Literature, intervened. 
asking Ricotti to dispense Don Bosco's teachers from the comprehensive college exam, given their previous attendance at the university. His prestige was such that authorities hostile to the oratory had to cease their unjust demands. The result was that Don Bosco's teachers were informed that they could enter the university if they passed the entrance examination. I'm going to let you in on a secret. The purpose of this channel is actually to save souls. And you can join this mission by becoming a monthly promoter of St. John Bosco. Your support helps provide education and faith formation for people all over the world and by our channel. As a monthly promoter, you'll receive spiritual benefits like mass remembrances, daily rosary intentions, and depending on your level of support, you may also receive beautiful religious items and books about Don Bosco's life and teachings. These serve as tangible connections to this great saint and his ongoing work. Your monthly gift, regardless of size, makes a real difference in young lives. Be a part of Don Bosco's legacy by spreading his love and wisdom to future generations. The link to become a donor is in the description box down below. So thank you for considering this impactful opportunity. In this second part of our episode, we've seen Don Bosco's incredible strategic thinking and unwavering faith. His ability to navigate complex challenges while staying true to his mission is truly remarkable. And as we face our own obstacles, let's remember Don Bosco's example of combining faith with practical action. Now, what did you think about today's episode? What stood out to you the most? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to know what you think, and I know for sure others will too. Join us next time for the thrilling conclusion of the story. Thank you for joining me today. St. John Bosco, pray for us. May God bless you, and Mary Immaculate keep you under her mantle. God love you.